Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Right, uh, this week we've been recovering from the fast dry harvest and catching up with a few yard jobs, including the installation of a bridge. I thought this week we'd have a quick look at the yield data from the combine and see if we can learn any easy lessons to take away. On a personal note, one side effect of producing this channel is the vigour and attention to detail it brings. Previously, we might have set up on-farm trials, but reviewing the data would tend to be slow. Now, with the pressure of the audience, I tend to review the records and lessons learned sooner. So, thank you for watching. Right, I have exported the raw data from John Deere's operation centre and I've imported all the wheat data into an Excel table so we can move it around more easily. Firstly, I split each field into either conventional or regenerative. So, I think it's important to review the rationale behind the decisions as we review the data. So, I'll try and discuss that as we dig into the data. So, Let's start by separating the planting date. Unfortunately, I don't have any regenerative winter wheat comparison because in every case we grew uh, an overwinter cover crop. Why? Because we took advantage of the countryside stewardship scheme and its extra 114 pounds per hectare. Note one field of spring wheat managed to out yield the winter wheat However, that winter wheat poor performer was the field where we spun on and rolled in extra seed in the spring. At the time, we debated whether to spin on or re-drill. The large field we spun on the seed yielded 4.6 tonnes per hectare, whereas the smaller one where we decided to replant achieved 2.8 tonnes per hectare. Both were on light land where moisture retention was critical this spring. Therefore, although not ideal, spinning on was a better decision in this case than redrilling. So, let's remove these two, two fields and average the remainder. So, conventional winter wheat produced an average of 8.07 tonnes per hectare and spring wheat 4.21 tonnes per hectare. The average for the last 10 years in winter wheat is 7.81, so it was an above average harvest for conventional winter wheat. We haven't been growing spring wheat for so long, but we do have a 7 year average at 5.48. So this was a below average year, probably reflecting the dry spring and summer that we've experienced. One bonus we have received is both the winter and the spring, spring Lennox have both made milling specification and this is remarkably close to the values predicted by the Hill Court protein predictor. I understand locally the yields have been very good but protein has been very low so hopefully the milling premium will compensate for the loss of yield in the spring wheat. Now Let's look at the regenerative spring wheat. As a reminder, where possible, I have used CSS option SW6 over winter cover crop and AB14 low input spring cereals to underwrite an aggressive approach to cutting inputs. I would not recommend following this route, but the point of this experiment is to see how fast soils can improve and recover. Similar to the conventional fields, I would like to remove some outliers. The lowest yield was achieved by a field where there was brome and a thistle outbreak last year. As a result, we used Broadway Star this year, which appeared to stunt an already stressed crop. As a result, the yield was dismal. In addition, the next three fields all experienced archaeology and ground investigation during the year, which has obviously impacted yield. Therefore, I have decided to remove these two. 
This gives an average yield of 4.13 tonnes per hectare with an average moisture of 11.5%. Our average over the last two years has been 4.2 tonnes per hectare. So, allowing for moisture at 14%, we would be spot on the average of 4.27 tonnes. As anticipated stronger fields with significant periods of grass in their history and higher organic matter did better, averaging 5.1 tonnes per hectare. So the average yield of conventional and regenerative spring wheat is largely similar. With the odd exception, the regenerative fields earned an extra £380 from CSS options. As you would expect, the variable growing cost of the conventional spring wheat was higher at around £400 per hectare compared to £210 per hectare for the regenerative crop. A conservative £200 per tonne sale price would give the regenerative crop a gross margin of 966 close to our conventional winter wheat gross margin objective of £1,000 per hectare. This method of farming will not generate the greatest returns, especially in a year with exceptional high prices. But interestingly, even in a drought year, regenerative spring wheat was, has matched conventional in yield and beaten it in margin. I realize that some people will say that spring wheat is a poor benchmark, that a better comparison would be winter wheat, but that ignores the point. Winter wheat doesn't allow the opportunity for growing an overwinter cup of crop and the reason I started looking at spring wheat was because I couldn't control black grass in my conventional winter wheat where herbicide spend was becoming prohibitive. As an anecdotal observation black grass numbers appear to have a linear relationship with nitrogen application there was very little black grass in the regenerative spring wheat. Thistles and brome on the other hand, there was plenty. Well, that's it for this week. Thank you very much for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, please subscribe to the channel by clicking on subscribe and click on the bell to get notifications of when our next video goes live. See you next time, bye.